All right. Well, New York had Bruno. Of course, <laughs> Memphis, Tennessee had the King, Jerry Lawler, and this past week, Jim. Only one Ooh, hour, boy. as opposed to the previous shows, which were two hours, a biography of Jerry the King Lawler on A&E. We got two hours on an Ultimate Warrior was in the business for five years. But, I mean, I, I, obviously, I could never get enough of, you know, the old Memphis footage and, and the story. And my God, he's been in the business 50 years and done all the other shit. The artist, you know, the art and the uh, running for mayor and a whole nine yards. And not just the Memphis run and the WWF, but the AWA and, and the other territories in the 80s, whatever. However, this was kind of like a trailer to a show when the when you watched the whole show at the end you were like boy that's going to be good i can't wait to see the whole thing there was no detail whatsoever gone into it was the stories we've already heard with you know about him and andy and not even in depth there it was you know it and i mean jerry there was no egregious you know, uh, history rewriting here. They didn't come out and lie like, you know, any other potential biographies where they, you know, wanted to change the narrative or rewrite history or whatever. It was just, everything was omitted because it was just the 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 most basic details of the, he was the king of Memphis. And he said, you see the Memphis Coliseum sold out for three seconds. But they didn't even really say the Memphis Coliseum. He's talking about going to shows with his dad that weren't even at the Mid-South Coliseum. Yeah, well, yes. And so that's what I was going to say is basically everything was errors of omission rather than rewriting any history. And then it also, there was a few things where the chronology was, you know, backwards when Lawler would tell the story. But Lawler's memory is notoriously rotten. Um, and he doesn't remember the shit he's done himself. But so it was just, you know, honest. I think he had the WWF agreeing to help them in Memphis a few years before they did the blah, 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 or whatever the fuck. It, but that's basically the thing. It, Lawler is an amazing artist, right? He can draw, he can sketch, he can do anything in almost any medium. And his handwriting looks like art. It's like, professional comic book lettering he can sit down and just hand write an advertising poster and you okay go copy this and hang it up you know you and he him you and him are my two favorite wrestling handwritings well if, i no, mine's not even yours is very neat and years. it's recognizable if anyone sees anything you well, ever wrote for the last 45 years same handwriting well but his is i'm just saying his is artist right artistic but having said that he never wrote anything fucking down. He he couldn't remember. I remember asking him in the late seventies, Jerry, who'd you wrestle in your first match? He's like, oh shit, uh, <laughs> it's only been fucking it's less than ten years ago. So, but that's the thing is that they never wrote any of this shit. I've talked about the TV formats uh, that he when he was the booker he'd come in with one sheet off of a legal pad and it would say seg one so-and-so versus so-and-so six minutes desk interview so-and-so three minutes break seg two <laughs> so-and-so versus so-and-so five minutes desk lance and dave do memphis card two minutes and what they do is he'd just call you in the fucking little bathroom at channel five and he'd tell you everything verbally because he had it in his head and then you you went out and did it. And if it was an interview and he said, well, say this and talk about that and don't forget to plug this and Terry Funk will be here next week, whatever. If you didn't remember it, you better remember it because you might not get a chance to ask him again. And it's live. So they can't hold, oh, hold up Seg 5 for a second. We're going over this. Fuck you. So anyway, the, he never wrote down like milestones in his career or whatever. He wasn't the obsessive record keeper. And so that's why a lot of this stuff is, you know, lost, but they could have, they had footage from Jerry Jarrett, you know, that they interviewed him before he passed. But Jerry, in a lot of cases, was the same way because he did this shit 40 years ago and he was doing 
at least one territory, sometimes two. And, you know, for weekly, for years and years. So he might not remember. And I don't think that, you know, they had Lance Russell, which was fantastic. They got a chance to interview Lance. But I don't know if the people asking him the questions necessarily knew what questions to ask, right? So this was just the basic telling, I guess. Before we get into any further, what did you think? I enjoyed it for what it was. Again, if you know anything about Jerry Lawler's life, the good and the bad, none of it was really here. It just kind of went from zero to 60, and then it was over. <laughs> A lot of stuff about his collectibles and his man cave and everything, and him driving around talking to women in his Batmobile. <laughs> but again, he's such a fascinating guy. There's so much to talk about. Just look at everything he did in the 70s, from records to the programs that he eventually, you know, you mentioned his handwriting. Fans knew what his handwriting was. He was doing the programs. Yeah. He also did the plaque that the Mente Negro hit him over the head with, but that's another story. <laughs> but he's such a fascinating guy. The AWA title win, again, that wasn't even mentioned. I mean, none of the big wrestling moments outside of WWE were mentioned. They talk about him and Brett and him and Piper, not about him and Austin Idol in the cage or him and Kurt Hennig for the title. So you have well, to kind of... There was nothing even, you know, they didn't mention the AWA or, you know, when they, uh, the brief flirtation with the unified world title, world class and all that. They went from like 74 to 82, then 82 to his debut in the WWF in 93 or whatever. And then, and then it was over. 